What is going on YouTube? This is Acid Roots. So I'm going to review the fifth album by DJ Khaled. Basically, this project is called We The Best Forever, and it came out in the summer of 2011. Now, the thing about this particular album is just the fact that DJ Khaled reached a pretty good high with the particular single from this album called I'm On One, which had a Drake hook on there. Basically got him his highest charting single up to that point as far as that kind of happened. And DJ Khaled was starting to cross over into like more of like larger than life kind of artist kind of territory as far as that kind of happened i think anything he dropped before like this particular album i mean i really think that dj Khaled, once he started linking up with jay-z and stuff like in 2016 2017 he became where he was kind of in like puff daddy and rick ross and ti territory in terms of his riches like 100 million 150 million type territory as far as that kind of went but back in like 2011 this was kind of an album that kind of helped get him to like that crossover type of appeal where i feel like kiss the ring and his other album from 2013, which I think was called Suffering from Success. I feel like some of those type ones did have some gems on there where, he's, where he was kind of becoming... Some of those did have some gems on there where he was becoming more ubiquitous, but this is kind of the one where he started to break over into that sort of territory. I definitely feel like I'm on one was... I definitely feel like I'm on one was a particular one where he was starting to do that, but I also kind of feel like this is just a particular kind of album where it just kind of has like DJ Khaled in a different kind of territory where some of this is kind of substandard. I don't feel like this is a classic album. I do feel like it has some gems on there. It's just kind of dicey as to how some of these gems kind of show up it's just kind of for some reason it just kind of feels a lot more underhanded it's a brief and compact kind of album but i just feel like the the territory of it just kind of is a little bit patchy and just doesn't overall have like the widespread appeal i definitely feel like we global is a better album i think the singles minus i'm on one are better on we the best from 2007 i just like the overall appeal of lists in the album from 2006 those are just some better ones but i'd have to say you know, Victory did have a pretty large hit with All I Do Is Win from 2010. I definitely think that was a pretty good song, but I think T-Pain just didn't really deliver quite as well on this particular album. Not to say that he's a bad hook artist or anything like that. It's just that I kind of feel like way out in 2011, T-Pain was starting to get kind of winded as far as that kind of happened. But there's a number of hook artists on here, but I just kind of feel like some of these songs are like the best hook on this particular album is from Drake. Drake only drops one hook on this particular album and it's on the song I'm on one, but everyone else, I mean, there's some good hooks on here, but I just feel like that's like the gleaming kind of highlight as far as this album particularly is kind of concerned it just this was like not necessarily a flash in the pan for dj cal but definitely kind of a huge highlight that this was his biggest song up to that point i would have to say it's just kind of the concept there's not really any other song on this particular album that matches it in terms of that now there's some other good songs but they're just kind of more in like <clears throat> I feel like I'm on one is the only real song on this particular album that breaks like the hardcore rap kind of mold as far as that territory kind of happens. The rest of these are kind of good, just in like a more if you're really into rap and super hardcore rap and that type of stuff. But for like a casual type song, I'd say I'm on one is about the only real one that kind of has that particular fair. This is just kind of not like a full blown lackluster album, but this is kind of slack, I would have to say in certain cases. This doesn't have the overall appeal. I do think the DJ Khaled's albums from the 2000s just stomp all over this particular one minus i'm on one but i do feel like there's four singles on here but they just like i'm on one just really completely this is like the shining highlight as far as that kind of happens but there are some gems it's like in a certain kind of sense but it's just kind of this one is just kind of this more kind of offhanded and just like unwieldy as far as that kind of goes it's not necessarily cumbersome but this kind of in the concept that this kind of is a little bit mismatched as far as it kind of happens but it's just kind of the thing i do feel like this did get dj cow a little bit more super stardom it's just kind of the fact that this wasn't backed up with like the alkali as far as that kind of happens but and to basically talk about this album like there were four singles like i was saying and the first single off this album was welcome to my hood so welcome to my hood was the first single and this is basically like a solid retread of all i do is win and the hook is pretty factory off this particular song t-pain does a decent job on here this is some rave evening and the song is some rave evening fair and it just has some decent pep about it I'd definitely say this is a good candid one to kind of have for like some motivational type fair and just overall evening type fair to have some excitement as far as i kind of have it's not quite as good as i'm on one but definitely like a good kind of one-two punch to kind of have where this would definitely be the second in the one-two punch i would have to say but it's just kind of I would say about seven and a half, eight out of 10 territory in terms of overall sheer quality. This kind of one that just doesn't quite work as heavily for like casual type fare, but just something that's just kind of, if you're familiar with DJ Cal and you know more than three or four or five of his songs, this is a good one to kind of look up and just in the sort of sense that this is kind of a vanilla kind of burner as far as that kind of happens. This works in like a good candid sense, but it's not really like a superhuman type one like I'm on one kind of is. It's just a good one, but it's just not superstardom type as far as that kind of happens, but it is a nice one. Lil Wayne does a pretty good. 
good. Verse on here, Rick Ross is on here, Plies is on here. They do some good jobs. So it's a good concept about that. But it's kind of the concept about it. Basically, I'm on one is the second single. This is a real sheer highlight. Like I was saying, this is DJ Khaled's biggest song for the longest time until he hit number one with like, I'm on one was DJ Khaled's biggest single until I'm the one in 2017, as far as that kind of happens. Basically, this one is like a murky. Basically, I'm on one is like a murky, kind of moody, lit, quick time single. I would have to say it's an album highlight, and the Drake hook is very fierce. I would have to say on this particular song, and the verses go pretty hard. This is just a very this is just a very memorable and kind of distinct song. I would have to say it's this one that kind of has lasted ability throughout like the 2010s it's one of the more powerful rap songs out of the 2010s definitely i'm surprised this song only hit number 10 on like the billboard 100 maybe it was number five on the billboard 100 i think it was number 10 the thing I remember about this particular song is just the fact that when the Grammys came around in 2012 or 2013, when these albums were winning those awards, I remember that like the folks picked like Niggas in Paris by Kanye West and Jay-Z is like the better song compared to this one. And I just feel like I'm on one definitely stomps all over Niggas in Paris in terms of quality. That one's just such a sheerly better. Drake just is such a better. Drake did just such a better job with I'm on one compared to like Niggas in Paris from those particular times. So I just would have to say is this kind of that's kind of the concept about it. But I did. I do really extremely but i'm on one is definitely a pretty major highlight i'd have to say the third single is it ain't over till it's over and this is a song i didn't really recommend that much this is kind of one the third single is it ain't over till it's over and this is a single i didn't really recommend that much i just would have to say it's kind of a poor one just kind of had like a poor boom bap type beat and this was overall not a very compelling one to kind of listen to i just feel like I feel like the first two singles completely flatten it ain't over till it's over just in terms of production fair and overall enjoyment. I feel like it ain't over till it's over. It feels like it's a song ripped out of 1991 or 1993 or something. This was kind of a paltry kind of one that just didn't stack up that well, I'd have to say. But the fourth single, Legendary, is a pretty nice one. Definitely enjoyed this one. This one's kind of like a glissy kind of pop rap. Legendary is like a glissy kind of pop rap club bounce of a song. I'd have to say it's a good tense kind of dance club outing. I would definitely have a good tense dance club outing fair, I would have to say. And it's just radio ready. This has a radio ready overall kind of feel about it. This one just has a radio ready overall feel about it. So this is a pretty nice one. Definitely like the kind of overall electro kind of hop of I just like the electro hop of this particular song. Chris Brown's on the song, Keisha Cole's on the song, and Neo's on the song. It's just an overall pretty good one. Just had, this is like a nice good R and B posse cut that works pretty well. Just an overall highlighted one that just does a lot of damage. This is kind of another song that I'm surprised didn't chart heavier. This is a pretty good bouncy kind of one. This works in like a pretty good highlighted sense. I'd have to say it's a good rhythmic tune to kind of have it was it's released a rhythmic radio. I mean, I kind of question, like, the R&B type, it's not common that the R&B posse songs by DJ Khaled really hit that heavily, but it's too bad about that because this is definitely a pretty solid one. This is one that I kind of overlooked back in the day, but I do think the concept of this one's a pretty strong and probably one of the album's better cuts. I'd say this one might be actually better than Welcome to My Hood. I mean, they're both, I feel like Welcome to My Hood's pretty solid, but I think Legendary probably edges it out a little bit, I'd have to say. That's just kind of the concept about it, but yeah, so... So there's 15 songs on this particular album, and out of those 15, I wound up recommending to you six and a half. So I'd have to say the almost song is my life with the almost song is my life with Akon and Bob. And to talk about that song real quick, the almost song is my life just because this is a great. This has some great Akon melodies and catchy ambience. I'd have to say about this song, but the lyrics feel, but the lyrics on this song feel like canned and kind of phoned in motivation fair. I'd have to say it's just kind of a song that's just kind of one of those hustle tunes that just kind of feels just like factory as far as that kind of happens. Just a very vanilla kind of hustle tune that just doesn't really have the edge about it. I would have liked a little bit more of like a kind of ghastly type one or a little bit one with some better ambience as far as that kind of happens. This is just like a standard kind of factory get on your grind work to get it no pain no gain type tune as far as that kind of happens so I just feel like the lyrics were just pretty factory made on this particular one it's really too bad because Akon's melodies on the song are pretty excellent he just does a really excellent time Akon does a really excellent job on the song in terms of melodies I didn't really like his particular lyrics on the song but I feel like he just had some great vibes with the melodies and just would have to say it's the same thing with B.O.B. he did a great job on here this just feels like extra fair from him as far as that kind of happens it's too bad that the lyrics are just so factory made as far as that kind of happen this if you do like songs about struggle and this is kind of in the concept of no pain no gain got to grind till you shine that type of stuff it kind of works in that sort of sense but it just is so factory and vanilla as far as it kind of happens it's just not that's kind of why this song's an almost song i would have liked it better if it would have had a little bit more oomph towards it but it's just kind of the concept about it there's actually a lot of songs on this particular album that just kind of have a lot of hustle type fare that just kind of feel phoned in as far as this one particularly that kind of happens there's just some ones on here like I feel like Legendary, like that one kind of had some of those. I feel like Legendary is another one that just kind of had some of that grind till you shine type feel as far as I kind of have and just pulled it off a little bit better. But some of these ones like Sleep Till Sleep When I'm Gone and Can't Stop, a lot of these just had a lot of pretty like 
steadfast kind of ambience and just overall drive about them that just were not always as catchy, I'd have to say. But we'll get to some of the songs I don't recommend in a moment. We're going to talk about some of these highlighted ones. I feel like a pretty good highlight on here is definitely A Million Lights. This is pretty much like a peppy kind of fresh pop rap EDM snap of a song, I'd have to say. It's one of the album's more trendy songs. This is one of the album's more trendy songs, I'd have to say, and it just feels like a song that Flo Rida would do around that time, something like that. I mean, he was on fire back in like 2011, 2012, as far as I kind of have. This is just kind of an interesting song for folks like Tyga and Mac Main and Corey Guns and John Mills and some of those type people kind of beyond and Kevin Rudolph. It's pretty good snappy kind of one. Definitely like the EDM. Definitely like the poppy kind of EDM type feel of A Million Lights. It's a pretty good highlight. And then I'm thugging. This is a great song I'd have to say, but the main sin about this song and then I'm thugging is a really good highlight off this particular album. It's just too bad that Waka Flocka is not on here more. I'd have to say this is a really great I'm Thuggin' is a really great haunting kind of Lex Luger beat, I'd have to say. Ace Hood does pretty well with the beat, I'd have to say, but it's just the fact that Waka needed a verse on this particular song. I'm really surprised that Waka Flocka Flame, as large as he was in 2010, 2011, didn't drop a verse on this particular song. He's on the bridge, and he does the hook and that type of stuff. It's just kind of the concept that as, as strong as he was in that particular time, that this was kind of a wasted opportunity for him not to drop a verse on the song. This is the sort of song, Waka Flocka Flame on a Lex Luger beat, that's just kind of a home run as far as I kind of have it's definitely something that needed to happen. It's just really too bad that we just didn't get that kind of vibe from Waka Flock as far as kind of having that happen. Because this is a pretty excellent Lex Luger. Because DJ Khaled having the budget to get like a very quality Lex Luger beat. It's just too bad that one of the the producer's best artists for those type of beats is just not on this particular song. It's just kind of a snafu as far as that kind of happens. But it's still a pretty good song. But just realize that Waka Flock is not full blown on it when he's usually a person that does the best on like Lex Luger beats as far as that kind of happens. But Ace... Ace Hood does pretty good on there. And then on the deluxe edition, there's a song called Bottles and Rock and Jays. This is basically like a pounding kind of nightclub tune. I'd have to say it's a very good flex song. I definitely feel like and this just has a hypnotic beat and it's just good for a good crazy night. I'd have to say this is just good for a good crazy night. And so I, I look at the concept about it. this is pretty much like a pretty star studded posse type song. Rick Ross is on here. Lil Wayne's on here. The game's on here. Folks like that are on here. It's just a good pounding type one as far as that kind of happens. Just a real kind of glissy type tune that just really feels like a pretty heavy hitting flex song. It's definitely one to kind of get dressed up and just look nice and just have a good time and just go out and stunt and just have like a carnivorous type time just a real crazy kind of bottle popping type night at like a vip or nightclub something like that as far as that kind of happens this is kind of the concept the main problem i had with this this probably should have been on the regular edition because the thing about the deluxe edition is it just doesn't really enhance the album that much it's kind of what i was saying with this album's patchiness is just the fact that there's only one good song to recommend out of the three on here on the deluxe edition then there's just a lot of spare songs on the regular edition to kind of talk about that so the Talk about some of these on here. There's just kind of like some poor kind of hustle tunes on here. I just kind of feel like a lot of these just have like pretty poor productions. Like I really kind of was disappointed by the Can't Stop song with Birdman and T-Pain. That one just didn't deliver at all. T-Pain really had some flat hooks on this particular album, which is kind of a disappointment. I think way out in 2011, he was kind of starting to get past his prime a little bit. I mean, I do support T-Pain in 2010, 2011, those type times, but just a lot of the songs that they tried featuring him on just didn't do as well as the songs he was on in 2007, 2008, and 2009. It was just starting to become more noticeable that these were just not as good and there's just like some kind of poor ones on here like future was just kind of a poor beat this one had ace hood and meek mill big sean wale Votto, some of those type people this would have to say but that one just didn't deliver quite as well it's the same thing with sleep when i'm gone these were just kind of poor productions that just were kind of dredging kind of droning on type ones that just didn't really enhance the album that much and I feel like it ain't over till it's over. Kind of had a poor boom bap type beat. I kind of felt like another Lex Luger beat on here that I probably would have liked if once again Waka Flocka or someone like that had been on there would have been money. This has Jeezy and Ludacris on there, but I just feel like both these artists don't really fit like a drill type sound as far as that. That was basically like the Waka Flocka sound that like Rick Ross and Lil Wayne and Waka Flocka were doing back in 2010. And it sounds like the beat is not quite as bad. It's just the fact that the artists that are on this particular song, and I just feel like Jeezy was not really terribly familiar with drill as far as that kind of went and i also felt like ludicrous was kind of an awkward one to attempt at ludicrous that's not really as much of his style as much i just would have to say i mean maybe he could have done it if waka flocka had put him on the right song but it just didn't really feel like their match as far as that kind of happened it's kind of happens to be a thing about it. so there just were some kind of poor ones on here about half the album in terms of the standard album quality just doesn't really add up to like par as far as that kind of happens and then like the deluxe edition songs like like self-paid was just kind of a poor one i've never heard of this rocks cat who was on the song with rick cross yeah i just kind of felt like 
you know, this was kind of one that just kind of felt like probably didn't need to be on the album. And then the rock and roll remix just had like a poor kind of the rock and roll remix, which was apparently a song by Raekwon, just had a poor beat on there that just didn't really add up to much. It was just kind of, I mean, I like the guests on the song, but this was not a good song to have them conveyed as far as that kind of happens. So this is kind of the concept about it. So, so me recommending six and a half songs out of 15 on this particular album. I'm going to go ahead and give this album like a 4.25 out of 10. I feel like there's just a number of bunk songs on this particular project. Just the moods and compositions of these particular songs just didn't really add up to much. There's just a lot of spare songs on here that just, when you don't have a ton of songs and so many songs are kind of slack and just don't have like good compositions, lyrics, and just things like that. And just overall beat productions and just overall elements that just have a lot of good times. It just kind of makes for a very spare project. I definitely feel like this album needed more moments like I'm on one and I'm thugging some of those type moments, just things like that. It's just the the great moments are kind of in short supply and there's just like some ones that just kind of feel spare and just don't overall carry the connotation. I kind of feel like when you look, I think DJ Khaled possibly may not have known at the time that I'm on one was going to be one of his biggest songs as far as that kind of went, because I would just have to say that I'm on one. I would have to say that I'm on one is basically like the album's best moment. Now, there are some other moments on here, but just in terms of like the sheer quality, that's pretty much like the most visceral type moments. The first song that you hear. So you just have to understand that Drake was basically on fire in 2011. Lil Wayne was on fire. Rick Ross was on fire. But just some of these. I don't know. These just kind of, I mean, for the most part, that's like the only true casual song. I think that's kind of the problem. There just weren't a ton of other casual songs that could have had DJ Khaled break over into that sort of territory. There's definitely some attempts, but I just kind of look after it. Just kind of comes off as more like a hardcore type fair or as good in that sort of sense for some particular type tunes. But even in those particular type moments, there's some mishaps that kind of lead to some of that. Like I'm thugging should have had a verse from Waka Flocka. I feel like money should have had like more suiting artists towards the drill type rap that, that was kind of going for. I kind of feel like, um, you know, like the lyric composition of my life, like it was a, it was a good Akon and B.O.B. type song as far as that kind of happened. But I just feel like the lyrics just were kind of factory and canned as far as that kind of happened. And there just were some moments, it's just kind of some nitpicking vibes in combination with some lackluster songs that just kind of detract from it. It's just kind of a hardcore rap album that just doesn't have like a sheer ton of best overall moments to kind of back up like some of the best moments like I'm on one and Welcome to My Hood and A Million Lights and some of those type times. It's just kind of... I, I mean, I do feel like there's some gems on here. It's just kind of the fact that there's not much point to getting into a deluxe edition because you look at Bottles and Rock and Jays, that is a good song, but the other two songs on there are not that enjoyable. It's just kind of the fact that there's just more than a handful of kind of spare songs that kind of bog down this experience. It's just kind of the concept about it. It's just kind of like a slab kind of album or a slack kind of album. But the social score as a result, I'm going to give the social score, I'm going to give a 6.75 out of 10. Because I feel like there's at least half the album that does have some social appeal about it. I definitely feel like there's some boppish kind of ones on here, like A Million Lights, I'm Thuggin', Legendary, Bottles and Rockin' Jays, Welcome to My Hood, and I'm On One. Some of those type moments in the summary appeal of my life in a certain sense. I'd have to say there's some good bops on here as far as that kind of happens. This is kind of the concept. It's just kind of the concept that you have to sift through it a little bit. This is kind of more of like a playlist type album, and more of like a mixtape type pair of a project where you just dissect the ones that you want and that sort of stuff more so than a full blown classic album as far as that kind of happens. There's just a lot of nitpicking as far as that kind of happens just here and there type stuff where you may have complaints here and there that just add up to more than like the sum of its worth in a lot of cases as far as that kind of happens. But 6.75 social. In terms of future, like DJ Khaled is working on an album for 2024, I'd have to say, but he does have a number of other albums I'm going to get to and such. But this is definitely like, I mean, there's some decent stuff on here. It has some of DJ Khaled's biggest hits on here. I'd have to say just some good vibes and like a kind of haphazard kind of sense. It's just kind of the concept about it. But I do recommend this. I still would recommend picking it up, whether you want to get the deluxe or not. It's kind of questionable, but that's just kind of the concept about it. There's some stuff on here, but just understand it's just kind of here and there.